thank you very much for participating in the Loop Project. Um, this project is funded by the Primary Award, supported by the Steve Beagle Housing Association to present social media online awareness to the masses. Hi, my name is Chase Johnson Lynch, and what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to give uh, a little bit, and I'm going to be asking a lot of questions about online awareness and everything. I'll put the topics up here, and then I'll be asking you. But we're also, we're going to film a little bit, right, to get some of your opinions on online awareness and everything in social media. I'll ask questions as they come along. First bit is not the first bit is like I thought this would be really interesting is the evolution of the computer, right? Now, I mean, of course you guys are young, so I wouldn't, I would say your grandparents instead of your parents because, you know, I come from an older generation than you. So the evolution of the computer, right? Starting down in the 50s and stuff like that. They were big size, you know, covers, you know, looking like they had vinyl records on them, right? Spinning. And I loved it, like, if anybody you know Batman, right? I love it how he go, and he pulls out a horror of code, which is like those like long index cards, which was like just kind of like binary rectangles. And supposedly he goes, look, Robin, the Joker's going to attack the museum at 3 o'clock. And it's like, how does he know that? It's like he's reading Morse code, right? But it's what they call actually horror of codes. And in that aspect, though, is that's how the computer kind of like started. You know, when we as children was looking at it, it's like, wow, isn't that amazing? You know, and it was also during like that whole atomic age, you know, there's a lot of fear going on, like we don't know what the future is going to hold. You know, and that atomic age moves into the nuclear age, and then we're still in that climate of fear. But what happens is that young people started to, well, envision the future past that. They started to fantasize about what it would be like, you know, and what's amazing is, I mean, there are people in here that are of my age bracket, what's amazing is, is two particular shows in particular is Star Trek yeah. and the Jetsons. How many remember those? Yeah. Star Trek and what? Star Trek. And the Jetsons. And the Jetsons. No, not the Jetsons. <laughs> Jetsons. The Jetsons. Oh, I don't know that. No. The cartoon, space cartoon. Thank oh, no, you. I didn't know that. It was set in the future, wasn't it? Yeah. And now, here's the fantastic thing about the Jetsons. It was kind of like, at that time, you had like the Honeymooners, you had the Flintstones, and everything. So they had the Space Age future family, which for them, the future was the 80s. <laughs> you know, oh, did, did, did they get lost in space? Like, no, 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 oh, no, no, okay. no, no, not right. that, not the lost in space, not right. the Robinsons. No, the Jetsons, what I'm trying to say is the Jetsons, what they did was, they traveled on travelators, conveyor belts, All right. right? They, and when, when um, George Jetson would get a call from his boss, Mr. Slate, he would call him on the video phone. You know, which was like his TV, mm. you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you start to think, wait a minute. Back then, it was fantasy. It was a cartoon. Now, it's the present. It. You know what I mean? We have travelators everywhere. Yeah. We have monorails, yeah. right? We're not flying around in little mini spaceships like Elroy or anything like that. But we are on, well, video phones, yeah. FaceTime, right? And Star Trek was the same. So even though I'm still waiting for my personal teleporter, right? How did they communicate but with the clamshell, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm down here on this planet, you know, and the signal is great, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what we came out in the 90s. They came out with the clamshell phone. There's some people, because I've done this class for uh, an older generation, the elders and stuff, and he still got them clamshell phones, huh? you know what I mean? My point is, is that at some point in time, we've all woken up into the future. We moved into data entry and IT systems. And so when I went to college long ago, only about 20 years maybe, <laughs> they called it the IT systems and they had random number generators. And they used to create games where it's like, the most coolest game was like playing baseball. You don't know what baseball is, right? It's like rounders. <laughs> but you could punch in the codes and then randomly will pick out, you know, whether you throw a pitch and he hit it or he miss. This was really cool for us kids back then, right? <laughs> I mean, hit or miss, hit or miss, right? That was wow. It was exciting. Now, you know, then they moved into Sims technology and RPG. Who knows what RPG is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're asking. Yes, I do know. Uh, that is what I'm asking. What is an RPG? You don't know? Nope. <gasps> 
role playing games. I know you're not wise, but I'm not, I'm trying not to make it all about male or female, you know? Role playing games like Legend of Zelda is an RPG. And we got the movies, and movies were like bringing us into the 80s, we bring like the Matrix. You know what the Matrix is? Keanu Reeves? <laughs> am I that old? Yes, am I that old? No, no. <laughs> you don't know what the Matrix is? You must take the red pill or the blue pill. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. Anyway. It was about being jacked. Yeah. At least I didn't say free jack when many of us are right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was about like computers were taking over our lives. You know, we're going from role playing games, we're going from sims, to now physically putting our consciousness into the computers. You know, and so. That, you know, we moved into the whole of that technology, and now into the present day, where we're down to hard drives and SIM cards. So now, uh, now the big cupboard <laughs> with the vinyl disc on it is now down to a tablet. Now down to a SIM card. Now down to a hard drive, portable hard drives. Let's say it's like this size, right? So I was just saying, that's our evolution. The point is, you grew up in the technology now where this is what you all know. But your parents don't. So your parents look at this as toys, right? That means toys that I don't know anything about except for the phone. You ever see an, an old, I saw an old woman, I say an old woman, but like a nan. I saw a nan on a train with a tablet. No, sorry, I saw a nan. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a nan on a train with a tablet doing that. <laughs> She's not knowing what is she doing, right? Is she swiping left or swiping right? Who knows, right? <laughs> she, she, she clearly doesn't. <laughs> but that's how. See, look at it. She's laughing because she knows what it is. You know, and that's where we're at. So, really, I just tried to give that as an overview of the evolution of the computer to where it is now. Because I think what, what's going to be beneficial about this online awareness that we're talking about today is, is that how we can inform your parents about this technology. Because what the main thing is, is that there's a thing that we call digital resilience. Digital resilience is like, because we're all using the technology, right? It's all about, you know, when you're at risk and what do you do about it, right? So, I mean, what do, what do your parents is always trying to say to you is to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, the best thing about them saying to you to be safe is that they're ignoring what you're actually doing on the phone. Right, because the phone, the tablet, has now become the digital babysitter. It's now become the virtual buddy, right? So it's like when they're wondering, what is my kid doing in that room? Actually, I really don't care. As long as they're not down here bothering me, right? But the main thing about it is, is that that's where online awareness comes into play, right? That's where we talk about the impact of social media. Welcome to one of all, right? My name is Chase Johnson Lynch, and we're here at St. Hughes Primary School for the Picton Primary Project of Online Safety and Social Media. So what that means is, is that we're gonna, um, one, have a interactive discussion around social media, right? Like, what stuff that you're watching online? What are you doing? What do you don't know? What do you wanna know? And then also we're gonna be talking about our end game, which is podcasting. So you will be making podcasts, which means that you'll be all professional, you know, sitting at a table where there'll be like three or four of you talking about particular subjects. So one would be a fun topic, like maybe whatever your favorite TV show is and you do an after show, right? Like which favorite TV show? The Talking Ground. Never heard of it. What is that? Um, <laughs> and so like this. Like, mm -hmm. it's like this. Yeah. That's probably why I've heard of it. My son is now um, 14, so go ahead. It's a good show? Yeah. Everybody else agree? Yeah. No. What's it? All right, quick pitch. Know what the pitch is? No. Okay. <laughs> Just explain the show in about two or three sentences. Um, the Donkey Ground is? The Donkey Ground is a show for kids. Um, the Donkey Ground is um, where kids don't have home and they try and do some stuff on their own. Like what? Like, um, get up to stuff that they've never done. Like home alone? No. They got rules. But they got rules. rules. What? You said they got rules? Yeah, they got rules. Oh, they got rules like what? They, like, don't go out without permission. 
There we go. I like this show already. I like this show already. So you've educated me. I love it. I love this. What I like about that whole interactive thing because I'm going to have to go back, look for that show, and then I'm going to come to you next week. And you're going to moderate a podcast around it. All right. So this is the first session for young people here at the Unity. All right. My name is Chase Johnson Lynch. I'm going to be delivering a session on building YouTube channels. But we're going to start off first with online safety um, awareness because that's what we're funded for. And then we're going to get into your creativity about what you want to create, how you want to create, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah? All right? So first of all, I want to thank you for participating in this. So the main thing that we want to look at first, because we want to hear from the young people here in the area, is what is the impact of social media? Right? So even though I heard it, but why don't you tell me, how many of you have a YouTube channel? Raise that hand up high, man. Be proud. Yeah, all right? One person, that's good. So one out of five does have a YouTube channel. Can I ask you, what's your age? 11. 11 years old. Now, do you realize that you're doing something illegal? You didn't realize that? You're not actually, you're supposed to be at the age of 13 to be on like uh, YouTube, Facebook, and all that other kind of social media and stuff. But people do it anyway, <laughs> right? It's no problem, don't worry. I ain't got some stuff like that. Nobody's gonna come and arrest you. But, they say that this is what the government does to kind of like protect. Like young people are not supposed to actually be on YouTube, have a YouTube channels, Instagrams, and all that. So let's educate people, right? How many? So what are the new apps that are out there? Facebook. Facebook. Well, that's not new, but okay, that's good. That is one. What else? What? You know what? Oh, uh, where is it? I had a class with some teenage girls. And they educated me. And they told me about house party. What's your name? Sorry. How old are you? Hey, yeah, these girls are a little bit older. So why don't you tell everybody else about this house party app that our parents don't know about? Go ahead. They can see what you look like, right? Can you see what they look like? Yeah, only if they show you. Only if they show you, but pretty much it's like a group, yeah. right? That is like, uh, like what? Snapchat? What you say? It's not. not really. It's FaceTime. Well, FaceTime. You FaceTime multiple people at once. Okay. Okay. So group yeah, FaceTime. Yeah. Group FaceTime. Isn't group that clever? FaceTime. Group, group FaceTime. Group FaceTime. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, so everybody's in group FaceTime doing all of this. But then also too, it's, I heard that at some points in time, oh, somebody right. would put up like Stranger Danger, wouldn't they? Because it could be your friends, on it? Mm -hmm. And then they, they have someone they don't know and they can call you. So it just has to be someone you've accepted. It could be you there. Oh, exactly. So a friend of a friend could come on to, to see you and talk to you and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what they, I've heard that what they do, they put like Stranger Danger on. And what does that mean? Right. Okay, so a friend but of a friend. Friend of a friend. It comes up with stranger danger. Does it? Or they, no, no, that's only if, because it's a group chat, like somebody may recognize that, hey, there's somebody in here that I don't know, and so somebody may do that. You know okay. what I mean? They don't auto, it doesn't automatically do that. The okay. app doesn't do that. The okay. main point is the app gives you access to FaceTime to a bunch of people that hopefully think they're in a group of friends. But when they come on, it'll say, like, they're in Say if you have a happens, I know everyone like, and you have to go in some more time, you may not know anything. Yeah, exactly. So, I just heard about this, like last week. So, is this popular? Yeah. yeah. You don't know about it? No. Good girl. But why is it popular? Yeah, Everybody else is on it, right? This is, this, is, this is the whole point about social media, isn't it? We're just on it because our friends are on it. That um, party app you told me about, the house party, yeah. oh, wow. I went and I um, went to another group of young people, right, here in um, Pinkton area, and I asked them the same question. Okay, so what new apps are out? And so some girl brought up house party. And then I was like, oh, really? You know what I mean? And then so it was like, it's been a real education, I got to tell you, because it's like, you know, in different areas, this app that is seems to be around amongst a lot of 
young people, I just have not been aware of. And this is actually kind of like something that I've been exploring as a job as far as apps and social media and everything like that. So I find it very fascinating and enlightening. So is it app free? Yeah. Okay. How do you get it? On a phone? On a pad and a phone. On a pad and a phone. So I mean like, does that mean like um, it's, it's just called house party? Yeah. yeah. So anybody can get it. Yeah. But usually only just young people will use it. Yeah, but then you they, yeah. It's not the kind of app for me, <laughs> right? I mean like as an older person and stuff, usually just young people do it. So just in, um, in cons consolidation, it's a multi-space time app where you can go on with multiple people at the same time. It's kind of like, is it like goggle box, like everybody's all on the screen? Yeah. Because yeah. that seems to be impossible on the phone, because the phone has such a small, small screen. So are you really happy to do this, or is it who, like, you, are you aware of Google Hangout? Ah, uh, see, that's old. So, what Google Hangout is, is that you see, like, the different heads of the people that are in the group, right, the group chat. But whoever's talking takes over the full screen. Is that how it works? No, it's yeah, just everyone's on it. How is that? So like, because it splits, like if there's four, it splits in fours, and if there's like eight, it just gets split together. That's what I mean. If it's a lot of, because you told me it could go up to like 20 people, right? No, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Right, right. So, I mean, the main thing about it is, is that because it's FaceTime, you also said that you could choose whether or not to put your face on it, or is it that, like when I'm on FaceTime, you know, I'm usually like sitting in the chair and my phone is here or something like that. And you're really looking at my wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe the top of my head or something like that. So, I mean, you could choose to not be on the screen, but you still could be heard. Is that right? Yeah. So that means that if anybody could get this app, and Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, exactly. And then you chop it. Yeah, but you can, okay, you can lock yeah. the house. Like you can lock the door, and then lock the house. <coughs> you can lock the house. And then you can say, so someone's walked in, so. Someone's walked into your house, watch out. That's when they say, like, crazy the baby kind of thing, right? right. Like, yeah. like some, somebody, somebody's in here, just letting you know, and everything. Now, for a day, you, you just said you can lock them out, but can they just enter anyway? And then if you don't know them, then you lock them out. No, if you want to get them. Usually you lock the room anyway, you just invite your friends in it, or they're last to go in, and then you'll just say you fix that. But if they want to meet in it, they can't get out, you've got to get out of the fix Yeah, because if you enter the party late, right, which is what you're saying, if you enter the party late, you know, then it's already whoever's in there, isn't it? Yeah. And if you're like Shanene, who's only interested in a friend of a friend of a friend, right? <laughs> right? That means Addie, right? doesn't know, you know, those other guys, uh, you know, because they're friends, she's a girlfriend, but then, you know, hey, hey, I'm hoping that his friend shows up and everything like that, right? But now, there's this thing called the Dolby Classroom, right, where, like, uh, they use it, like, for schools, where you can, like, do, uh, like, classes with multiple people in different countries and different places. So is it like that? Like, is it international network, in, or is it just your local area? It's yeah. everywhere because I can do it your mates in America. Can they? So your mates in America could join your house party? Yeah. That's, in a way, it's cool, right? It sounds really cool, Where right? Because. Canada? <laughs> 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 At least you're not a guy that said I got a girlfriend in Canada. But no, that's kind of cool, though, isn't it? Because in that way, is that what's exciting about it? Is it that um, it's like American movies, isn't it? Like, if you're going to go to a house party. It's kind of like you go into a virtual house party and there's a bunch of random people in there, isn't it? You ever seen an American movie? <laughs> Come on, you know you have. Yeah. <laughs> so is it like that? You know, hey, yeah, let's go to this party tonight. And even though we're only traveling through our phone. You know, it's more like you have to text each other or something. Because like, you can yeah, pass a note. Yeah, you can pass a note. So here's that was the, here's the last bit. So what I was trying to say about Adobe Classroom is, when you have the whole big classroom with all the people, then there's a sidebar chat. Is that what you got? Like a like a, a sidebar chat? Like if you want to talk to people, is it like you know like? A, like private. No, so if I want to talk to Patty, you only have to. Really? You have to put in a name, and then you need to go in a little circle with a blue cloud. And nobody else can see your conversation. No. 
So can you go, so, so, we, so in this Adobe Classroom, they call it pods. So can you do that? Can you have like a private little group in that house party? You can't yeah, you can have your office now, but you can make groups to FaceTime. Wow. So, why is this fun? Because, like, being on FaceTime with one person is just boring. Yeah. yeah. I used to have, like, three things out, so I could just FaceTime people. Yeah, but if they're having private conversations, you can't hear it, though. But you can see them, is that right? But you can't, you can't see their texts. You can only just see that they're having a private conversation over there, they're having a private conversation over there. Right? Because you just said it glows blue, right? Yeah, we don't normally do that though. Like, it's normally just talking unless, like, you want to tell someone yeah. something specific. But normally we just all talk. Yeah. You can never tell with anyone else. Just said, like, say I want to message Sinead, but, like, or Charlie and, and Amelia are in, the, are in the group chat. And they won't know that I'm texting Sinead. I'm so sorry. Unless you stop laughing, yeah. Yeah, so Sinead can, they won't know that Sinead says, I like that guy, or I don't know that guy. She must be honest. She must be honest. She must be now. <laughs> well, thanks very much for that, though. I mean, that was, I mean, you know, it's, it's really mind-boggling, you know, what access there is. The thing about it is, there is a potential for hacking. So there are, are different people, right, that are trying to find out your information. Guess what? How old are you? Nine. So it's not like you have any information that somebody should be trying to find. But what they would be trying to find is your parents' information. Especially like, you know how like, you know those phone apps where you know you can buy a game, right? And you convince your parents that this is a good game, I really want this. Right? <laughs> how many have done it? Yeah. And how many of those games used to start out? Remember when those games used to be like uh, Bitcoin, when it was like jewels? All you need to do is buy jewels and pay in jewels. Like what? What game was that? Um, I think it was Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans. Clash of Clans. So what that? It has money, coins, and gems. Clash Royale. Ooh, it's, it sounds great, right? I can do all money, coins, and gems. But guess what? All of that is not actually real money, right? So what they're asking you for is, oh, well, you know, if you get a credit card number, which you don't know about, you should really, you're not at that age, but you know your parents have one. So what happens is, is that your parents <laughs> are doing, or suffering from what we call digital parenting, right? Where how many of you, let's say, have your own computer, tablet, or phone? Everyone. Everyone. How many of you are playing a game on those in your room? Most of the times. Most of the times. Mostly everyone, let's say 80%. Oh, look, now she put it up. Right? Do you know what I mean by that? How many of you are plugging in your headphones when you play these games? Me. I love it how they think this is a good thing. <laughs> so, when you do. All of those things, how many of you, how many of you where your parents are just thankful that you're occupied? Doing something else. Instead of going, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, daddy, 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 right? You know how they say, you know, you're supposed to give kids only a contact, like maybe like an hour contact online, you know, because they're supposed to be outside. And your parents say, oh, I think I'm going to give you an hour of contact. But how many of you are still on it past that hour? Mm. Exactly. Why not? It's boring. Anything else, isn't it? Mm. That, you can be honest. It's boring. Anything else, right? Like, if I go outside, or anything. You don't go, you, you go outside? But they don't let you. They don't let you. Why? Because of fear. This is what it's all about. So if they fear everything outside, then now that everything is going digital and inside, and one thing, they're just happy that you're inside. I can watch you. But what it is, is if you're online, you're back out, not just outside, but you're in the universe. Do you understand that? You're in the universe. There's so many different opportunities out there in the universe. But the point is, it's about you being safe, right? That's, that's what we're trying to say. Now, smart not to say, yo, I want to go, oh, Charlie222, my friend over there in London, he's great.
great. I like, yeah, I love talking to Charlie 222, right? I can run home. Charlie 222, yeah. And then, whoa, Charlie 222 stops wanting to play the game and just wants to talk to you. I'm lonely. He's lonely? Huh? He's lonely. Charlie 22 is lonely, man. He just he wants to stop playing the game and just have a conversation with you. Then what do you do? Go. Go. Why do you keep wanting to go someplace? I like traveling. You like traveling? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my point would have been um, is that you do want to, because it's a virtual friend, and that virtual friend at least is having a conversation with you, and you're having fun with them, and so you want to do that. Uh, before I do it, I'm gonna ask him how old are you? You might, might lie. You might lie. So like Siri, don't believe everything you hear. So eventually, yeah. friend like Siri. Yeah. 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 Siri.
But you can choose who can see it, but you can all go to go, but I've chosen who can see it. Isn't it like snap streaks or something like that? Or? It's, it's like where you can see people. That's a different thing. It's like a yeah. track. It's like a track. They, they can, can zoom out and just see exactly where you are, what house you're in, and all that. And then how long you're on, yeah. But um, you can put yourself on ghost mode, don't choose. Ghost mode? So, so I know one can see you. But I've chosen the auntie and they'll see me. I love your terminology, because I was going to get to that. You know, I love you. Terminology, I was gonna get to that. You know, I love you ghosting and haunting and zombies I mean, they're, they're mad cool right it makes it so much fun um anyway what did we learn <laughs> just in this bit right here is, is that can we at least like change our minds towards it right it's a bit of fun right be caught out like that but it's a bit of fun in the aspect of saying look i probably should be a little bit more conscious okay. did your parents ask to be on your account no why they they found my account and followed it. Oh, she means like a parents follower. Yeah, my dad. So your parents spy on you. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Mm. How many? How many of you know what sharing Tinder is? So, sharing Tinder. Anybody knows what sharing Tinder is? No. I heard it, but I've never you seen it. You heard it? Sharing Tinder. Sharing Tinder. You mean sharing it? So like you share it with someone? <laughs> no, but it's clever. Thank you. So Sheraton is like one of those like, you know, um, one of those French words where parents, parenting, the parents share their children's photos. Oh. So what was it yesterday? It was this. It was World Book Day. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Public 
will see shaming your child by behaving in an embarrassing way. And, and. Alright, hey, yeah! Okay. Yeah, so you got it. Hey, whoa! Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna keep a marking. Alright, and B. How many photos of the average child do you think will be posted online by their fifth birthday? A, 500, B, 1,500, or C, 150? 150. Okay. Five years? Big thing. Big thing. What's the answer? It's big. It's big! Oh! All right, guys. Doing nothing time. We had took the kids. Can't realize, brought them back, and you still didn't care. Right. But I mean, like, the thing about it, though, is just like, it's, it's, it's weird that even though young people are in this digital revolution now where everybody's into like this social media, it's about those parents who are into it, and this is what they're doing. I mean, I like that last question where it was talking about the parent who, like, something happened to their kid, and they actually was on the phone. And they missed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's kind of like we're so jacked in, you know, to the technology and everything. You know, like, um, what did you think you would have answered the questions the same way, Noah? Uh, I don't know. Who wants to You don't know because you were really reading the questions. Yeah. Ah, that's the last girl. And everything. That's fair. That's good. And stuff. So I mean, either way, is is that you know it is just really like a good example of uh, Sheraton and stuff like that. All right, I got that for now. You know, but the point is, when you say you don't want your children out there, then they're the ones who are actually doing it. Yeah. So we started talking about the terms that you guys are using, maybe not you, but other people, like ghosting and haunting and all that kind of stuff. Anybody want to say anything about that? Tell me about it. I don't know. See. What is that? This is called, like, when, if you've been, like, locked up in a house, like, you're locked up in a house and you're locked up in a house and you're locked up But, yeah. So, in, in what context, though? So, like, if you, um, haunting is like when you are, uh, you're blocked from your girl, your ex, your partner's account. Yeah. And what you do is you go on as somebody else. Right. right and everything and then you just kind of like watching the activities of what somebody's doing and so they call it haunting because it's kind of like <laughs> like i don't know you there but i know you there man <laughs> oh, yeah. i know you're there yeah. but you know um what's ghosting Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the not last time. You know, yeah, it's like these words, they, they, they're kind of like these cool, you know, emoji kind of words. Yeah, so it's kind of like um, if you're on WhatsApp, you, you definitely see it on WhatsApp, all right? So on WhatsApp, your avatar picture comes up. Yeah. Yeah? And so you're chatting away, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, especially like if you meet someone new. Yeah. Right? And, you know, you give out your number so they can get your WhatsApp and everything, but all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm tired of talking to this person. Yeah. And then you block them, and you block them, and your picture disappears. Yeah. And it's just a white screen. So it's like you ghosted. And then you go, oh my God, you ghosted me. Stop. What the? You know what they yeah, do? You know what I mean? And then, yeah. Don't know a few times. Yeah. Uh, you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. We're also doing a course over at the Hector, Hector Peterson Court with the elderly. Or the age, let's call them the age, because oh. I feel like I'm. I'm yeah, like, like me. Like me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> You agree? Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to have like um, uh, uh, an um, intergenerational um, piece where uh, the young people who ask the old people questions, the old people ask the young people That's questions. So mm -hmm. But then the idea is because you're here and they're there, there. <laughs> we have to do it in a different, clever way. What do you fear most about the internet? What would you do to keep safe? Um, I keep myself safe by. Um, using shout outs that people have put up rather than just having people randomly so I know who they are and what they are to the person that I've added them on. I also use quick ads um, on Snapchat where it comes up with a per like person's name and how they found your username and if you know them you can follow them. 
maybe don't you just delete like, it and you won't come up again? Like whether the phone won't contact yeah. or whatever, like friends of friends. <laughs> It's very good depending upon how the person uses it. Because I believe there are so many silly things. The same WhatsApp, sometimes I have my reservations to withdraw from using it. Um, well, we, can, we use like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat, which is where like you sort of show people where you are and like what you're doing at a certain time. You don't like need to show like exactly where you are, it, do it doesn't have like the exact pinpoint of the location. But if you're on holiday in Spain, like you can say like, is it like in Spain? Yeah. And it just like comes up so you can share with your family and friends. Okay, what apps could I use? I recommend Facebook because it's like the easiest to use, like out of all of them. I feel like because like loads of parents and people use Facebook as like as adults and like when like it's sort of weird when like your children have got Instagram like you don't want to sort of be using the same technology it's sort of like them. So um, what what did he do before like he's all had phones? A government phone. A government phone? What's that? Um, what do we call it? The local phone we have, the plug-in one we have. Just was it attached to the wall, was it? Phone on wire. Yeah, phone on wire. Yeah. Did you communicate with people back in the day? Like in my day, we didn't even have electricity. In 1943, when I was born, there was no electricity in rural Ireland. So, we, we had no power in the first place. Uh, the phone became a reality probably in 1970. Uh, we had the old coin box that you go and you put your money in and you had to ring it and you went through the local operator and you knew straight away that she was a postmistress and she'd tell everybody who was on the phone and who who you were ringing and probably listened into the conversation as well. <laughs> How did you communicate with people back in the day? My next one. With letters? Yeah. Uh, at that stage in life it was by letter which was uh, terrible because it took so long for the letter to, to go and it took longer for it to come oh, back. So it, it really wasn't a good way of communication. So thanks to technology today, people can instantly get in contact with friends. How did you like meet up with friends and what did you do? Because when we meet up, we usually just go on our phones and while we're like in the process of organising it, we're always on our phones like texting each other and asking, so how did you sort it out? I had to go and find them and talk to them. I couldn't use a phone, there was none. We didn't have none. Oh. Back in the day, it was an expensive telephone call. What? I'm, I'm going to try and test what the actual government thinks, right? See, so they did all of these tests or, or surveys. I think that when I looked at it, it's pretty outdated. <laughs> That's just my opinion. But, so I'm going to ask you, what are the new apps kids are using now? Snapchat. <laughs> don't, don't just jump into it, but jump into it. <laughs> all right. So Snapchat, what else? Instagram. <laughs> oh my god, are they actually using music? No. You <laughs> said they are. I thought musically was just for music. I thought it was just kind of like, hey, yeah, you know, for old people like myself, you know, we would go on musically and have fun, right? You know, like Dub Smash. Anybody remember oh, Dub Smash? Yeah. Oh, I got some great Dub Smash videos. But, um, so I never tried musically, but anyway. So Snapchat is musically, Instagram, and what's the, one more? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure? That's not an adult, is it? I'm gonna I don't go on it, you know. I only do two followers, but I So, what they have said is Snapchat, Instagram. So, you're not on WhatsApp? Oh, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't go on it anymore because all my friends in year seven kept texting me about like 800 Would you got too many messages when you were on it? Yeah, but I forgot to do it. That sounds really fast. You know what? 
No, I, I'm the same way. I, I hate walking down the street. Somebody comes up to me trying to have a full conversation, and I don't know who they are. <laughs> you know, because I'm very popular on Facebook. Don't look for me. But the whole cool thing about it is the fact that, that you know, it's that whole digital thing where people think they know you because they see your life on Facebook. So they're talking to me, and I'm like this. They don't even notice that my eyes are like, oh, I'm in circles. Because I'm trying to figure out, who are you? Right? <laughs> do we actually have a physical connection? Or do you just see my pictures from Turkey? I don't know, man. You know, <laughs> you know what Turkey is. It's a place. <laughs> so actually, this play, did, they did get it right. This is everything that they said. Snapchat, Instagram, it's clean. Well, they said WhatsApp. So tell me about Twitter. Why, why Twitter? Because we Twitter. Why do you have it? Uh, oh, oh, you're on Twitter too? Yeah. That's um, what I was saying. I only have it because I don't like and fans of like bands and that and they have that so I just to find out what's yeah, going on with them. I know, I heard that story before. Why do you use Instagram? Oh. Oh my god. I love that. You know, she's like uh, please inform. Why Instagram? I, let me tell you what I think Instagram is. Instagram, I feel, as an adult or an older person, is just like a picture site. You know, like, hey, this is where I've been, this is where I've gone to, and then, hey, this is all fun, here's my food. You know, like, you know, it's, 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 yeah, I know, Facebook is worse than that, isn't it? So, none of you met, so, wait a minute, first before I say that, but why, why Instagram? Because you could follow your friends' friends. You can follow your friends' friends. <laughs> yes, you might want to get along with it. You might want to get along with it. Oh, there we go. I can follow my friends' friends. Oh, my friends. Follow my friends' friends. <laughs> so, what happens when you all of a sudden, you know, text Bobby? <laughs> what do you say? Um, don't get personal. Well, sometimes <laughs> might like, yes, might not. Why would they? I don't know you. You're just a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. Of a friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Why are you blanking me? I don't understand. Well, <laughs> I, I follow people that I've met. What? I only follow people that I've met them once. Or like, because be my yeah. mates, there's quite a lot of people that come out around my mind and make it. But like, their friends, they come out sometimes, so that's why I follow them. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I've done this before, where you know, like, I mean, eleven-year-olds are talking about they got Instagram, and then you know, it's like, uh, then what happens is, it's like, yeah, yeah, some some weird guy like followed me or something like that. And it's like, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. <laughs> so, Shanae, what is your name on Instagram? Oh my God. <laughs> so, your name is your name, right? So, she name. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just make it up. Don't worry about your name. <laughs> Wait a minute, you put your full name on Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time to call the internet police, isn't it? <laughs> now, why she puts her full name on there? Because she wants the friend of a friend to find her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have two accounts. One's like, I put loads, like a spam account, so I put like loads of pictures and even names on with the other one, and he has like two pictures on A spam account? What's a spam account? <laughs> it's like you just put loads of pictures on it, like of stuff. And it's pretty crazy what you put in top five, but basically. No, it's not. My mum and dad are all on it. I've got pictures of them on. So, you know, did you not watch Catfish? It's been on for seven years. Yeah, I watch it. So, I mean, do you not understand what's going on here? Five accounts, two accounts, real names. Yeah, but mine's Well, true. the worst thing is real name, isn't it? Can please people agree with me that you should be changing your Instagram today? Yeah, if you put a friend's name on, I think you can do a lot. Oh, shit. Friend, 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 right? You know, they should know who you are. Let me ask you a question. Um, you take selfies with your mates? Yes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, and you put it on Instagram, don't you? She gave me permission. Who? Oh, you give her permission? Oh, dude, I love this. Okay, <laughs> so, you take a selfie with your mate, right? Yeah. And she gives you permission, right? Now, everybody knows the average frame of a selfie? Yeah. 
it's like what? Like, uh, ooh, we gotta see our faces, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, we're like, and then we close it in, right? What do we stand up? YouTube, stand up. Stand up. Stand up over there. Stand up. Okay, you three, guys, okay, stand up. Okay, stand up. Let's get a little more active here, right? Yeah. Stand together and give us your selfie pose. So what happens, you know, and this happens, you know, this is going to be like a soap opera, right? What's your name? Lane. No. Catalina. Addie. <laughs> Addie. Okay, Addie. So, <laughs> so what happens if we play some soap opera music and um, whatever, no. and Addie and Shanene, right? <laughs> that is her name, <laughs> Addie and Shanene quit. Right? What happens when they stop being friends? Who knows this story? What? Delete. You can't delete from the digital universe. It's forever. It depends how you stop being friends. You could just like not talk to them anymore. Yeah. And when you have an argument, then yeah. 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 But come on. How many of you have experienced this? How many of you lost a friend? All right, Zoe, tell the story. All right, Shay, I know it was happening to you a lot. But Zoe, tell us the story. You lost a friend. Yeah, in primary school. We had primary school? And you were on Instagram? I wasn't on Instagram, they had pictures of me and on their Instagram. Um, in primary? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, we were in school and we had an argument. I forgot It doesn't really matter, but. Yeah. Uh, and um, they like had that picture of me and then, like, when I went on Instagram when I came here, because I wasn't allowed a phone until. Yeah. Year six. Yeah. So when I came here, I looked online and I was scribbled out all of her pictures. So being scribbled out is even worse than just showing your picture, isn't it? Because then it makes you feel bad, right? You know, because then when other people see that you're being scribbled out, then they just make a judgment because, you know, people are cyber trolls when it comes to virtuality, aren't they? You know, I mean, they don't know her, right? Right? They don't know you. But then they can make a judgment on you because someone else has done that to your picture. But that's what happens in these virtual relationships, isn't it? It's not going to happen with you guys, Addie and Shanae. <laughs> All right, what makes you happy online? <coughs> what makes you happy online? 
funny cat videos? Are you serious? That's so yesterday. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I mean, nobody's watching cat videos anymore. I mean, because YouTube is like the new television. If anything, you should be watching the American TV shows on it or something like that. You know what I mean? Like Black Lightning or something like that. That's just me. <laughs> what, what do you watch on, on YouTube or online or whatever? I, I also watch like TV shows on my... Yeah. Do you, do you watch those reaction shows? I watch Logan Paul. Logan Paul? This is nice. <laughs> I don't want to have to make you leave. I'm sorry. Don't you know about the Logan Paul? Yeah. <laughs> I know you know about Alright, so what's your opinion? Uh, it used to, I started to think he used to be like a good person until he showed that video of that in the crowd. Yeah. And then he wasn't, he wasn't that good before that video though. I mean, you know, like the problem, the issue around with Logan Paul in that video scenario, you probably all heard about it. But like, um, Logan Paul, I don't know if you ever heard of a kid called Super Mario Logan? No. Yeah, well, see, there you go. These, these kids are so yesterday now. But like, what it is, is that, you know how we're going to talk about creating YouTube channels? And one of the main things about creating a YouTube channel is consistency, right? So, you know what consistency is? Well, yeah, but that means you have to keep it going. So whatever your channel is, you have to keep it going every week. If you don't keep it going every week, then what's going to happen? Right. So this is what happened to Logan Paul. You know what I mean? Because like what happens is, is that, and it happened like with Super Mario Logan as well, before then, is, is that, you know, okay, you think you have a great idea, but now you don't realize that if you're going to make be a YouTuber and you're going to be a podcaster or whatever, you want to make money like a man over here wants to monetize, is that you have to be consistent. Not only that, but you have to have an identity, right? A brand identity. So Logan Paul, who was, used to be on what, Disney Channel or some crazy little yeah, show or whatever? Yeah, he was on Bizarre Bark. Yeah. On what? Bizarre Bark. Bizarre Bark? Yeah. Okay, it sounds crazy. <laughs> was it a good show? Yeah. Okay, good. I liked it. You liked it? <laughs> what was it about? It was like camp science. Oh, like 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 camp. Um, Is that yeah. Yeah. Like that camp. Um, the one where the kids from Jesse they did that yeah. bunked yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I watched that one. Yeah. But um, so Logan Paul was on there, and then he decided, you know, I'm gonna become YouTube famous and everything. So he started doing crazy things, didn't he? Right. Um, and then, you know, you would run out of ideas. It's not like he had the producer or a director or somebody behind him, it's just kind of like, like Case KSI, everybody knows who KSI is, right? Like, he was like one of the first ones, especially in, in, in here in Britain. Britain. And like, he just started out making fun of his parents. And people thought it was just funny because like, his parents were just so not <laughs> into technology whatsoever and he would just do crazy random things. Now he's like millionaire, right? Yeah. And stuff like that. And everybody wants to be him. So then they figure, well how 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 am I gonna be crazy? What's gonna be my type of crazy? And so Logan Paul, who actually got caught up in that situation, probably didn't actually think about it. <laughs> like maybe this is not really a good thing to do. Well if he went if he went to the forest and it's known to be the suicide forest, then it's gonna be a 99% chance that he's going to see it like Yeah, I mean, like, what is he on the episode of Stand By Me or something? You know, I remember, it's Suicide Forest. I mean, that's even crazy enough yeah. as it is. Yeah, and but little kids watches YouTube. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, I'm going to go to that forest too. Thanks, Logan. Where is it at again? You know, I mean, it's not responsible. And that's one of the main things you guys will have to do is, like, if you're going to do something like that, responsibility is the main key here. Talking about the flood that happened on Valentine's Day. At least 17 people were killed after a gunman wearing a gas mask and carrying a sm carrying smoke grenades opened fire on on a on students at a school in Florida. 2:25 p.m. on Valentine's Day. So, what do you guys think about that? Another shooting in America. I mean, how does that relate to you? Too many guns. It's illegal. It's dark. Um, when Donald Trump was asked in, his, in an interview, he stated that he doesn't want to talk. Like, he was asked by a reporter about gun crime, and he said, now is not the time. How do you think that affects you being all the way over here in England, hearing about these shootings? I mean, I mean... Well, stuff like this happens across the world, so... Feels more safe. Feels more safe, but 
Well, not as safe. You know what I mean? No, no, I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. But like, the thing of <laughs> But no, I mean, no, because shootings happen here as well, though, don't they? Yeah, what happened in June last year? What happened in June last year? Down street. Literally 10 seconds away. So how did that, so, so, so that was close by to you, so how yeah. did that feel? Um, Scary. Surprising. You have to stay in, you have to stay in this building while it happened. Well, really? What, it happened in the daytime? Yeah. yeah. About seven o'clock. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So and it was still like outside. So I mean that must have still that must be kinda of scary though, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you think that because there's so many shootings that we're becoming a little bit desensitized to it? Uh people just want to treat it like it's normal. Like, really? like, like people be coming out coming out carrying guns. And like thinking it's okay to pull them on people. And it has this one out of those in the area. Then America is around 86 guns to every country, isn't it? Wow, didn't know that, but it's probably true. And here, only 6 or 5. Yeah. It's a lot of numbers here. Still, still one got too many, though. Yeah, 6 guns to many. So, yeah, it's a very important topic. It's like what I just said about doing stuff that is socially relevant. Obviously, it's socially relevant to them. Everybody has a different experience, but yet the same. So, what did you guys think about that? Mm. Well, like, my friend, uh, she lives in Florida, and she only just moved there as well, and her school is directly next to wow. where the Florida shooting happened. And I just think it's stupid that they still have banned guns because yeah. now that's given children in America they don't feel safe in school and they should feel safe in school because it's a place where you go to learn and to be safe and not get harmed. It's just for education. There, um, there's a big youth movement that's happening in March, right, where young people are gathering on the White House lawn, right, because they're tired of all of this and they actually want and the what truth. does that say to Trump if the young kids Well, it, it should say the right thing because Trump, as we all know, came out and said, you know what, we should get teachers guns. Yeah, but and, and that, <laughs> I said I don't want to get political. How ridiculous, you know, we're here to Yeah, I know, I know, very ridiculous, teach. I don't want to get... And then it but says, yeah, what happens if you see that? And then it's the fact that they're not allowed to vote. Yes. It's also the fact that if you give a teacher a gun, the students are going to feel threatened of and course. again Why scared. And the and thing is, like, we, we don't want them. Yeah, and if a, if a student becomes like violent or aggressive in class, the teachers are taught to protect them, but instead they might just shoot them. And that's yeah. it's not it's just like one time. Because there's only kids with yeah. like, mental disabilities, like ADHD or something, they might well, get angry and they might like, go in the cupboards and get a gun when no one's looking and they could exactly. be shooting anyone. Yeah. 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 Or a teacher left their classroom. Or a teacher left their classroom. And if it was that easy for a kid death. who was expelled to come into yeah. school with a gun, it's easy for a kid to get angry at a teacher. And take the gun from where the teacher has it, yeah. It should be normalised in a school no. for guns to exist. Yeah. Like, like, I remember watching the Kardashians. I don't care like, what you think about the Kardashians. <laughs> but it was uh, after the um, no. attack in France, you know, where, uh, where Kim yeah. got like, yeah. held at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the two of the other sisters wanted to have a gun in the house mm. to protect themselves and Kim went off on them and she was like well I don't want my kids to think that having a gun it should be normalised and everyone should have a yeah. gun. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's around, so well, it's been there that teachers just took a gun into a class and yeah. used it. Yeah. Yeah. I do not know that. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's on the news. It's on the news. So do you know anything more about it? Um, Are you going to look it up there? Anyway, I was really angry to see that. So yeah, I of course. Because now if the teacher is starting to do that, really, as a mother, I understand. And feeling justified because their own president said it. And I say their own. Yeah. Their own president has said it. As I said, I didn't want to really get political about that. But this makes me really angry because I have not even heard that. Is that a teacher is now thinking that it is justified to go in? So did anybody get hurt? No, nobody gets hurt. But he just one, took a gun and one it. student because he jumped out of the window. Oh no way! Yeah. First floor or? I don't know if it was the first floor, but she did hit herself. The ankle. She hurt herself. Yeah, yeah. Of course she did. Yeah. So Please tell me it ended with the rest. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been arrested. arrested.
Anybody knows what an after show is, so she can understand what I mean by that? You would know what an after show is on YouTube, right? No? 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 Anybody ever see black like this? Yeah, black man is a superhero, man. Black yes. superhero, dude. Come on, dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's on CW, man, and everything. You know what I'm saying? It comes on Netflix here. No, no. Um, oh, he got lightning powers, and his daughter's got powers. So his daughter is got superpowers. So they're like thunder and lightning and stuff. It's really cool. You must watch, must watch. Anyway, so after that show is on, then a panel will do an after show where they just review the show and they talk about what they like and didn't like about the show, right? And then break it down. So those are always good and fun. No, no, it's just kind of like, you know, this was a really good episode and this was what it was about, that kind of thing. And it's done in a, because it's like a couple of people done in a fun manner. Hi, today we're going to be talking about Riverdale on the After Show. I am Adelina and I'm joined by... Um, Sinead. And by... Charlie. Who has never seen the show before, so we're going to try and convince her to watch it. But what do you like about Riverdale? I personally like Archie because he is like my favourite character in it. And I like how he got is now more involved with the second season with the Black Hole because of his dad. So what's your opinion? I think the mind mostly like the cliffhangers that are like on the up every end of the episode where like you have to wait a week for the episode to come out, so like basically it'll leave on a cliffhanger because you wanna watch it, so it it basically draws you in more. Charlie, do you know at all what Riverdale is? People, and then there's like this place that they go, and there's a blonde person, and then there's Jughead. <laughs> okay, well, Riverdale, it's basically a murder mystery. Oh. As well, I quite like how it's evolved from like the comic, from the Archie comics, from like the old generation, to see how it was presented back then, to how like it's being presented now for like young teenagers. Yeah, so these used to be Archie comics, which they're based on. No. Okay. That's I mean, usually what it is. I think the good thing is it's on Netflix, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's easier for us to watch, so you can go. You have Netflix, yeah? I'll just use Joe's account. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can eat. It's, it's on Netflix, and there's two se two se seasons, and it's on a two week break, so it starts yeah. again It starts again next week on Thursday. Hi, guys, and this is the Fabulous Five, <laughs> and today I'm going to talk about what. Um, what TV show do you like? I'll pass it on to Mummy. Hello, my name is Mummy. I'm the only one here who likes Dennis the Menace. About Dennis the Menace, this kid called Dennis, he loves he loves doing pranks on this kid called Walter. I'll pass it on to Mumma. I like New Dragons to the Edge, Race to the Edge, because there's loads of dragons and there's, they fight and have violence. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Wait, what did you guys think, anyway? What did you think of the video? Um, I thought of the video, I, I felt a bit nervous because I didn't know what to say. And um, and we was just talking about our favorite shows. Yeah, but I think you did a really good job, first of all. Yeah, no, no, everybody spoke. I thought you did really well in leading the conversation, pointing out who should speak next. So, Samara sat here all quietly, right? Oh, I'm yeah. shy, I don't want to say anything. I don't they even know what I want to... Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I want to be in it. And then once the camera went on her, she's like, Hi, I'm Samara, and I really like this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my first time recording a camera, and, and I think that I did really good. You did? He did. You had you handled all of the close-ups and everything, you know. And also too is with Vicast, especially since you do on your own YouTubing, it's not about how special the camera is because you can use your computer, can't you, and stuff like that. But also there's a part of like you know uploading the stuff, editing and everything. So we can only edit if you have more than one camera, right? What about you, my man? Um, I felt um, good because this is my first time. Big, um, Filming a, a show, and um, I felt good with, off about, about this filming. I just want to say, though, is, is that because you operated the master camera, the master camera, which is the wide camera, should never move. That's for everyone. You got a wide shot, you hold it. Why? Because every time the second camera moves, when you're watching videos on YouTube, what do they never do? You never see the camera movement, right? No. 
And that's because they usually just cuts to a wide shot, a close up, or a mid shot. And the only way they could do that is because they have that master wide already always there. Hello, my name is Wayne, and welcome, welcome to the Fortnite Show with Ashley and Jay. Hi. Say hi, guys. Hey. So mainly on this topic, we're going to be talking about Fortnite, the dislikes, the advantages, especially with this new gun and the shrines. Jay, you want to start us off? Shrines. Ashley. Okay, come back up. Yeah, it's you got a few tests in there. You know what my one's face, you get free chests. <coughs> don't free just chest. get a chest in one by one's face, though. Yeah, I'm still messing the same, at least, at least in the shelters, the park tower room. It's kind of like a 50 50 guy. But on the other hand, the new grenade, the implicit grenade. Yeah, it's shit though. This is more, it's the same over the troll weapon that I control with. Yeah, uh, is it funny? <laughs> Why is it so pressing you to do it Like say you see someone that's the for, I didn't even go find the to die. But you don't get the kill off me. You get shit, you die for damage. True, true but it, it depends how high how, how high you are. If you've got like, a sky force or something like that, that's definitely a lot for damage. Or two equal to a knockdown. Yeah, because Wait, if, you're on team, if, if you're on teams, if you're on teams, you're Speaking of they're gonna they're gonna ban it soon. Okay, I'm banned. I'm triple pump. Still gonna ban that after. <laughs> And they could use the pump with no legs. Still banning it. <laughs> Thanks for watching this podcast and I hope you join us soon. Bye. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Fantastic Four. Hello, my name is Levi and uh, my favourite show is Hetty Feather and uh, my favourite character is Vince. And my my name is Jafar and my CB favourite CBB show is Head to Feather and my favourite character in that show is Head to Feather. Hello um, and my name's Anna and I like the dumping ground and my favourite character is maybe. Hi, I'm Amelia and my favourite CBB show is Creep Out and my favourite movie is Trolls. Uh, let me uh, explain you about our shows. My favorite, um, het my favorite TV show is um, Hetty Feather because it's a uh, Victorian times before uh, everything started, and she in that film is um, here. She's looking for her mom because when she was little, she was given to uh, um, King's uh, schools, and um, she she was um, a baby then. And let me see, Jeff I will tell you more. Um, Hunting Feather is a CPP show which you can watch in CPPC. Um, it's all about this girl that lost her mom and she has been given to someone in a hotel where she has to clean everything. Um, Try to watch this movie on CBBC. Thank you for watching. I'll introduce you back to uh, Amelia. Bye. 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 You and as I was doing it, I felt nervous because I didn't know what to say next. Mm -hmm. I felt a bit shy, so uh, I didn't know what to say, and I just said words that I didn't know what to say. <coughs> The same outfit, I felt, um, I felt nervous and um, we couldn't practice our words better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the camera crew, yeah, so um, about what you guys, the assignments that you were given, so what about you? What, tell us what you did and how you felt about it. I come with all <laughs> <laughs> You filmed the close-up camera. Right, so you operated the close-ups. So how did you feel? I feel like... Stop telling her what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I felt good. Okay. What about you, my man? Um, I, I felt nervous because I thought I was going to drop it on, on, on this. Yeah. Because I, I, was, I was videoing it and then I was turning it. And then um, it was it was falling, but I I held it tight, and then 
and then I just stopped it and I stopped it. Okay. What about you, light boy? That's you. That's you. <laughs> Yeah, 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 we know. But there was a problem, wasn't there? It's not broken. The battery was dying, so that's what it was. So, but I mean, you at least kept it going, though. That was good. What about you, my man? You had the, like, the directing, and you wanted the time, and you kept putting up different sets of fingers. Uh, it got confusing? Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. No worries, man. But I just want to say, at the first time, I think you guys did an amazing job. Today we're going to be talking about scums and viruses. Pop-ups can give viruses and um, they can destroy your computer. What do you think about scums and viruses? I like to spend more money than the actual cost of the item. Actual pin drop access of your credit card number. What do you think about them? Pop-up ads can have like, viruses in them. But they can also be on like, in-game cards which can be very tempting to click on. Because you could have an item in the game where you really want with the Indian currency, but it'll take like a really long time to build that amount of currency in the game. What do you think about what's happening in viruses? It's very big. So, if, if you're looking for some money <coughs> or something that's worth a lot of money, then, like, these pop-ups could come up saying that if you click this, you could win an iPhone X. And then you have to Put your name, address, age, and credit card number on the account on your um, application form and stuff. So, yeah. So, um, that, well, that's what we were talking about. Um, and thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Watching. Remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that notification bell. Real quickly, what, what did you think? I think we need more practice. Yeah, yeah. Practice. I'm just gonna. Okay, first time though. First time. Relevance. So, anybody understand what social development is? That is something that is important to you. So, let's just say, like, for example, cyberbullying. Right? Anybody know what cyberbullying is? Whoa, all hands up. All right, tell me what cyberbullying is. Let's see who has it. Okay, go ahead. And inside of bullying is when you bully online. Mm hmm. Yep, bully online. Is that it? <laughs> that was, was kind of easy, wasn't it? <laughs> um, it's when you bully online, and sometimes they try and like fix it out like, how are you, but then like they start building up their like, I live on the street, then what you do, then you start going Now that's like when, that's, that's a form of like trolling. Like when someone is like, you know, um, trying to pretend that they're your age and they ain't trying to engage you in a conversation. Yeah. That's very good that you brought that up because what do you do if that happens? Exactly, right? Because a lot of kids keep that to themselves, don't they? You know, because it's just kind of like in school. If somebody says they don't like your hair or they don't like your clothes or anything like that, and then, you know, you feel bad, but you figure that I'm not going to tell anybody. What is it that you want to say, right? Um, Hands up just like that. Uh, once someone after you live and I just give you a friend, I said I live in L7. Right, you don't have to tell me where you live, but I get you. <laughs> you, 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 um... No, that's a fake address. No, 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 I, no I, get, I get what you're saying. My point is, when someone, let's say you're playing a game, give me an example, like Roblox, right? Yeah. All right, uh, they go, yeah. Let's say you're on Roblox, and that is like other people could talk to you on Roblox, can't yeah. they? Yeah. Right? And what would they do is, is that they get a sense of you first, you know, like, and uh, they figure they could talk about themselves, right? And that will help you to think, oh, you're kind of like me. And then they'll ask you kind of like slide questions about where you're from and how do you feel and all that kind of stuff, right? But guess what? Dude, I'm on Roblox. <laughs> also, doing is playing robots. I'm not trying to engage in a conversation about where I live and, you know, and all this other kind of stuff. But you sometimes get 
you get stuck, sucked into that. It's kind of like, one of my questions here was kind of like, are virtual friends better than real friends? It could be. It could be. Now nah, that's an honest, that's an honest man. I'll say an honest man. I, it could be, right? Why? Wow. Go ahead. I just asked you. Because <laughs> maybe your real friends don't be that nice to Mm -hmm. And then you have another friend you don't know, mm -hmm. and your virtual friend, and he's always nice to you, and you meet him in real life, and your friends, and then when you play together in the game, virtual friends. Like you yeah, but that's the whole point. You shouldn't get so sucked into how nice that person is that you want to meet them, because that's the goal for them, right? I mean, like, the thing about it is, is that it's a shame when, like, say, a virtual friend can seem like they're more interested in you than a real friend. But in that aspect, though, is the point is if you don't know that person, right, then that's when you shouldn't really, like, set out to meet anyone. Meaning that you tell your parents, right? You can always check out a person, like, their IP or, like, their address where they are. You make sure that that person is actually another lad like you before there's any kind of contact. You don't have to go, oh, I'm going to <laughs> meet someone. Never do something like that. You understand? You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do that, right? I can't get to you. What, Jesse? Yes, you don't want to do that, right? <laughs> Hopefully your, your friends in this group can back you up on some reason. Well, I don't understand Facebook. I think there's a wealth of why though, because you get to communicate with everyone. So like, instead of like message and stuff, you get like, you can send pictures to people, like, where you want. Yeah. Like, it does like group chat and Snapchat, and you don't have Snapchat, you just feel a bit like, isolated. Like, like if you talk about something yeah. on the chat, and then you weren't there, and then they've all got this like, inside joke now. Yeah, and if your friends come into school talking about it tomorrow and that, mm -hmm. like, you're like, what? Like, like so. You sort of do it to like follow the crowd a bit. Yeah. Why do you think you guys do it as well? Like get these social media or is it the same for you? I think it's the same. Like I, I know how to use them and everything, I know how, like how they work and yeah, I, I just use it to talk to all my friends. I know who not to speak to and I know if there's like a random person who's following me, I'll send it to my mates first and see if they know them. If they don't then they I delete them straight off it and then I'll put my accounts on private so not like random people can see my accounts. For an example, say somebody you didn't know and you didn't know that they followed you because sometimes it does happen, you just accidentally click like um, and they started DMing you or texting you or messaging you, what do you think you would do? Well, like I speak from like experience, like it there was this man and we, me and my friend were, we were like very young, we were like 10 mm. and obviously like when you say you're not supposed to have Instagram or whatever, but we did, <laughs> <laughs> just did um, and he followed us because we weren't like, we weren't told about like the private settings or whatever and I ended up having to tell my dad about it and he did end up taking it to the police and he did end up saying to them like, well like there's a strange man, like do it like there's a bunch of things that I wouldn't get into that like he was talking about and it's just a bit like thinking yeah. but you you have to tell someone like even if you don't feel like you could specifically talk to your mum and dad about it I always find that talking to your friends help mm. as well like if you you don't want to feel like grass because yeah. you know when like you're a teenager and you're in school and stuff mm. it's not as easy as just go up to a teacher and say something it's not as easy yeah. as that anymore like if someone, if you go to someone, they're gonna have their own opinion on you. Yeah, and if you so. ask for them not to take your name into it, they're gonna know. Like, if you tell the teacher, oh, I've had an argument with whoever, and they'll know that it's you. Yeah, they'll know that it's you, and you don't wanna have to feel like that, and like you don't want it to carry on because once it's not in school, it's not in school. Yeah. Like. If it's dragged into school, then the teachers can do something. But if it's not dragged into school and it's just online, then th no that's when thing. you've got to like. If it's that bad, you're gonna have to. Today we're we'll talking about cyberbullying. I'm Daisy, and um, we're gonna talk about bystanders, victims, and bullying. I'm going to pass it on to Lucy to tell to, to 
tell him about me. Hello, my name is Lucy. I'm nine years old, and we're, as Deja said, we're talking about bullying and all these things. The bystander is the person that, that watches you get yeah. bullied, and, and someone they stop in, they they step in, in and help you. Yeah. The victim. The, the victim. The person getting bullied. So if somebody gets bullied, never go up to them because they will fight you and the and the right thing is telling a teacher it doesn't matter if you get called a snitch and a grass. A bullier, a bullier. see the person is bullying you like like I mean I've been getting like these weird you know text messages or you know pictures that I don't like or myself being sent around and what do you think about that? I think the people who do that are responsible because they should think twice and then send it. What about you, um, well I think if someone's getting bullied they should tell, tell someone and like they shouldn't like take it to a level of violence or of sharing it with other people when it can just be solved like without everybody knowing. Well, right now, I certainly can't think of an opinion that could say. I do not, right now I do not have an opinion that I could say on this. Can you, can you have anything or something else related to this topic? Well, well, all I want to know is why did, why did they even start to say the bullying? Like, what's, the point, what's the point of it when they even, when they even probably get, get it themselves? Well, most of the time it's because they're insecure about what they don't have. And then if something, for example, if they have problems with their families, they take out on other people who did nothing wrong to them. They just they just have no one to actually like talk to, so they just lash out at victims. Yeah. We decided to bring in some of the toys, right? Where if like you're doing this kind of broadcast, there are key things that you need. One is obviously the camera. Obviously, you would take the what off? Lens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously you take the lens cap off, wouldn't you? So that way, you know, uh, right. <laughs> I'm not going to go into all the complications of the camera, but obviously when I turned it on with this switch, 
then you can see through the back of the lens what you're, what you're filming, right? So, this camera will then go into the tripod, which on the tripod has what they call a shoe, and that just means the tripod plates, which you can't do it with one hand. So you look at that. Take that off, and we screw that onto the bottom of the camera. So now it's on, and then I put it back onto the camera. So we never let our hands off the camera until we're sure that it's secure, right? Because it's very specific. So we have to pull back lever, secure. We go bang on. Another important toy is sound. Sound is my kryptonite, right? Because when we use the in-camera sound, I can hear Charlie breathing. And no, 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 well, you know, Charlie, yeah, <laughs> you got a cold. So, like, uh, if we use the actual sternal mic, which this is, it's called the Tascom, right? We're going to put it onto the table for where you guys are performing, all right? I'll go to the record button, but there's only one record button, you have to press it twice. And so this will go onto the table. These room mics, they're what you call um, unidirectional. So they usually pick up whatever's in front of them. So we put it right here in the middle person, and it will still pick up the two people on the sides. Now the last toy is light. So we got camera, sound, and light. And look, we got filters for that lighting. And so for the light to turn on, we put the battery in. Now, do -do 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 -do. Look at that, that went fast and simple. And these are called barn doors. Now, what you like to do is warn people. So I'm warning you now, lights. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Now what's great about this, it's better than that little light that I had, right? But when you put the filters on, it adds color. <laughs> Will it make me look it adds orange? Color. Yeah, right? You're getting that, right? Now, you can control the intensity. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> right? So when you're in dark places, you want more light. Okay. Oh, there you go. Nice. So that just ends like that little technical setup to control the lighting this way. See, with the barn door, making sure that the lighting is just there on the table. Now you might say, yeah, but it still looks dark, sir. But actually it doesn't, you know, because the camera is aperture, it doesn't see the way we see. We see everybody naturally, but the camera, that's why you always hear about the iris and opening the aperture and all of that kind of stuff. Because, you know, that's that's what happens. So this just makes it all nice and cool. Even though there's nothing really wrong with this natural lighting, but I just thought that it would be a nice effect. So I'm shooting the wide shot of the three people on the table. And so as you can see, even though you'll see the shadow of me, you see the shadow of me in the black screen there, when the color correction is affected, that screen will go even darker, completely black. Or, because we'll put a picture on there, we will actually chrome key the black out so that way it just becomes a frame. The camera that Charlie is holding there is our second camera. So we would need a second camera operator to shoot what? If I said this was wide, what would our second camera operator shoot? Face. And close-ups. Um, well. Close-ups. Thank you, Zoe. Close-ups. So that means that while there's her hand, where you don't really need an operator here because we can trust that it's on. So the person who is our camera operator will probably be like here, and they will be zooming in to the faces of people who are talking, and to the reactions of those who are just reacting to what has been said. So it's what we call a one, a two, or a three. Three is for the wide, all three people. Two is for a two shot of two people, like probably sitting next to each other, reacting. And the single, so the one, is for the close-up of the person who's actually saying something. <laughs>
did you what did you think of the uh, the podcast or the podcast? I mean, was it fun? Was it interesting? Easy to do? What are, What are your interesting, thoughts? Interesting, fun, yeah, yeah. 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 anyone interesting. Good to know like other people's views. Very. Very I, I, no, because the Star Wars one, I absolutely love Star Wars, and I've seen every single one, and I thought it was Luke. I am your father. See, it's Mandela. I can't. I can't leave this podcast without talking about Friday. Mm. Because I know the reaction of our camera operators, how they freak out <laughs> when we talk about flat earth, right? That's true. I'd like you to think about something that um, you would say, yeah, you know, we could continue doing this. So we could continue doing an after show. Doesn't have to be Riverdale, it could be anything. We could continue doing conspiracy theories, you know, and only do one topic, yeah? So you could do a five minute, you know, cast. It could be two people, it could be one person, they do single uh, cast. You can review like uh, the latest movie coming out or when the shows return if you watch the CW shows. Trailer reviews? Yeah, no, but you can do that. <laughs> I mean, if you go on YouTube, you know, afterwards, go on YouTube and you'll see there are like, not only girls your age, but even younger sometimes that are doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, they are doing this. This universe, Your that's why we're trying to say YouTube is, 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 is what you make it. What you'll see is an example of what we call the cartoon effect. Um, because of young people, and this is hopefully an old way of thinking, but because of young people being involved in YouTube and everything like that, you know, automatically parents get scared. Right? <laughs> what could happen? But hopefully when they see some of the discussions that we have participated in, they have nothing to worry about YouTube and a lot of other things that they have to consider. Mainly is their awareness. Even if you choose to not tell your parents everything, which you guys are great people and you do tell your parents everything, the point is they're not asking you any questions, are they? But pretty much they're asking you only kind of like, hmm, you're always on your phone all the time, man, right? What do you, what do you want, right? They're not asking you like, so, Let's have a sit down. So exactly, what are you on? How are you being safe? Are you being careful? Are they asking you those kind of questions? Mm -hmm. No, but I think... Do they, they trust me? Though? I was just going to say that. I think each kind of a level yeah, plateau where they do to, kind of know and they know... When I was in year six, like, all the, like, you know, all, like, Instagram and Snapchat and stuff then, they gave me an account then to see what I'd be like when I get into year seven when I wanted more freedom. Mm -hmm. So they can check the account and what's going on on the account. But Amelia, the importance is, that even if they do do that, <clears throat> it still is about their own particular awareness, isn't it? Like, um, asking you what you're on is one thing, but having a discussion about it is another, right? Uh, we, we had that quiz, the Sheraton quiz, where we were trying to test how much your parents, you know, like, uh, know and how, how involved are they in sharing your pictures online and all that kind of stuff. And even though you guys won, Right? I don't know, the camera wasn't on when you won. It's like, yay, you guys won. But the thing about it was, was the fact that, that like, it's not their fault. This is not me saying it's your parents' fault. It's about awareness. So when we talked about your own school, which is, which is a great school, they have a great safeguarding um, program, but you also mentioned that when you have, what, IT, and you do have, like, what, a day, on online safety, what was your opinion? We don't, like, we don't really get like, that involved. Just be dead honest. It's more like the teachers just read like, <coughs> stuff off the board. Yeah, and we're learning more about strangers contacting us rather than like things that go on with like, your friends and stuff. So rather than like reality of the stuff you use. Yeah. yeah. So we need to raise that awareness. Too. Exactly. It is about the fact that, that the schools have usually taken a stance where we'll avoid it. Like, we won't allow you on YouTube, <laughs> right? We won't allow you to do this, and everything will be fine. But, as we will see from this course, that's not exactly the case. Because you got your phones, you got your activities, and the activities go way beyond YouTube, go way beyond Facebook. You know, with the different social media apps that are out there. It's, it's not just you. In another group, same thing. Same, same type of girl, but then she's 11. You know, talking about her experiences on it and how much she enjoys it, what's wrong with it, and all that other kind of stuff. And we're not saying anything's wrong with it, we're talking about the possibilities, which is what your teachers are talking about. But you don't have to continue go down into the darkness 
right, and having those discussions. It's just about being aware of how to be safe, right? And that's, and that's what we're talking about. So you guys had some, bur like, um, I looked at a piece of the video from last week where um, you guys were talking about that phone app. Uh, find your friends or whatever it was. You, you mentioned it. What, what okay, so what would I do? We just get um, do you know what? I wouldn't do it now. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you think so, I wouldn't do it now? So you see the lock weight one? Yeah, this button here. Yours on the side. Oh, yeah. You just, like, press it and press it and press it and press it. Like, yeah. There's another one that I've seen. Yeah. There's an app where um, basically it drops your location mm. to the police. That's what like I got that one. Yeah, it drops your location. <laughs> <laughs> But I no, feel like find what's it called? Find. Oh, yeah, the top. <laughs> no, I'm talking about my dad's house. That's how I found my mum. She was like in the like a close step. Like, she's she's like just 18. She's, she's, she's obviously going out on the town with like, her mates all the time. <laughs> she actually has Joe the Fine Friends on your phone. She uses that to track her mates. We need that. Like when they go on dates, like do like we need the dates which are a bit dodgy. Yeah. They we use that. that. That's a good idea. But I think it's and just have you also good. have you also heard about and I only saw it when I went into Landud now and it was just having dinner and in the day. And I went into the toilet cubicle and on the um, I can't remember the girl's name, but on the notice that if you say, um, have you seen Karen to the bar staff? Then they know you're on a date, and it's going wrong. And it's going wrong, and you feel. Oh, wow, that's really cool. So if you say to the bar staff, um, "Is Karen in today?" They know you're at, you, you're feeling. I just think it's just because. Oh, that's that, that is really cool, life. man. What's like, it called? Or was that in the place you were at? London, no, she said. Like, you'd know? rather be you know, know yeah. about that yeah. than not know yeah. about it. Well, you know, there's a strategy if you're in that yeah. position. But there, should, there shouldn't have to be a strategy. strategy. It, shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. Like, yeah, Addie, you know what, Addie, Addie, Addie it's like a ball of string. Happen. Nothing should have to, have to happen. No. But well, it's called, it's called is, awareness is and safeguarding. So in that aspect is if, that, if there is a safeguard in place, that there should be that awareness of what I can do because as opposed to what am I going to do when I'm in that position. Whether you have I have a lot of videos on my phone, like how women can get out of like situations. Oh, have you seen it? Bag throw. And I was also like order a drink as well. Like in America, this one is like if you go over and you ask for a certain drink, they're like... Know that you're in... That's yeah. a problem. Yeah. Well, I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. See. That's what I'm just trying to say is that I've learned a lot from you in this course. I think now especially, sir, because it was different to when we were kind of going out dating or whatever, but the girls, they will be putting themselves out into that yeah. media world of, and, and that's how people are meeting, aren't they, on, on sites. But you're already out there. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say is, like, you say you're 14, we talk to in another class girl who's 11, I'm going to go to a primary class where they're even younger. So that's the main thing about it is everything you say is important to everyone else. The idea of this project was to be able to share your stories and experiences, you know, to share the learning of all of that, yeah. right? They will go into what is called a playlist, right? So what I have up here is an example of one of our other projects, Four, Four Wings, which is a, a program for women, um, um, Deal, uh, living through domestic violence. And they wanted to do something fun. They wanted to, you know, create a social media channel and then to be able, you know, like to be out there. Now, of course, they have a lot of issues. Some are still in court cases over their children. Some are in hiding from their partners and everything else like that. And so what we, you know, explain to them is with the podcast that, like, there will be people in front of the camera like you were and then there will be people behind the camera. You know, so we could do like a call in and then, you know, so we don't have to break that confidentiality. But this is not about who I am and what my experience is, it's about empowerment, right? Self expression, confidence building. That's what this program is about. So doing YouTube is great because the average person can feel like a celebrity in a way because they're on a channel that the possibilities are endless to be seen, but they also can be private. So they could be unlisted, they could just be sent to particular people and everything, but they will be, you know, pretty much designed like this.
what did you learn? Um, about the dangers of strangers and viruses and the social media. So, can you tell me, as a person who's already involved in YouTube, was there anything new that you picked up from yesterday? Um, I've never used a camera directly onto the YouTube website. Like, normally from the Xbox or something. From yesterday, I learned something about viruses can do to your um, brain. Like, it can do to Websites such as eBay can do to your well, not do to your device, but like do to you personally. YouTube isn't that hard. Um, if um, well, it's not a YouTube channel, you you need to be like you need to be consistent. You, you can't just like you can't just like post one day and leave it and then like don't post it another week and then like you have to be like kind of like. Resilience and Did it help build any confidence in you? Yeah, because I thought it's not that hard to like anymore to go in front of the camera and speak because like it's at the end of the world, you're just going to speak in front of the camera and then edit it later. So it's not that hard to build up confidence. Okay. Um, could selfies be a bad thing? Um, no. No, because you said if you have a new trauma, we be a thing. Well, it can identify you, right? But if it does, it then it's fine. Well, no, I've mainly done it before. I feel like it's something that I used to do. Like it's on a weekly to two week basis. Do you think it'd be an interesting course to take? Yes. And I mean, because I understand that you are experienced, but there's always something new that you can learn, isn't there? What do you think about YouTube opinions and what, how to use it and just the basics? What do you think about um, this course at, at the fair, at, at the start? At the start, um, I felt nervous because I was recording and when I, when I was doing the video, like, I felt really like scared because if I like, had to say something wrong, I felt really nervous because it like, not remember what I have to say, so I felt really nervous at the start when I recorded. Um, I felt very nervous because I was on the camera before. Okay. I love like at the start when we all told everything and then we kept on getting told but um um we kept on getting told <laughs> we kept on getting told like it's the most of every week. Guys, what did you learn? I felt like a bit nervous because um, I was I was talking and um we yeah. were um I, and I didn't know what to say but I knew what I was to say in the first part but I didn't know what I was talking about the second part. And then, um, that's it. How did you feel, Mummy? I feel I felt scared because I don't really like the cameras and being in front of everyone. Why did you feel scared? Because I don't really like being in front of people. And acting. Did you like this part? Yeah, it was really good. My favorite thing was when, we, when uh, people, when I was filming, um, when I was filming with the camera, why? Because um, I haven't been filming before and this is my first time. What did you say, Cole? Um, what part did you like? Um, I felt that when we were filming. Did you feel? I feel nervous, but I feel like I feel great and it's great because. What did you learn? To, um, I learned how like to camera, um, how to like record because one time I was sick because me as a record um, um, and I learned um, that it's not good to be a bully like I don't want to be a bully anyway do you like this course and why? I like this course 
I'd say it was like interesting to see people's different thoughts and opinions and then also the fact that we all had like different experiences and stuff like that. Overall I think the programme was really helpful for me and my friends as well for us to all be able to talk about it and understand each other. I really enjoyed it and I learned how I can speak to all like my other friends who have similar who've had a similar experience to me online and if I need anything I can go to them and I know how to keep myself safe. I like learn like loads of different ways to keep myself safe on social media and like other people's views of how they keep themselves safe which could benefit me where I go I feel like I can talk to more people about it and keeping an end. About what? My experiences and stuff. What I learned from this program is that like I don't like want to talk to strangers and all that kind of stuff and all that, and they uh, like don't want to like follow them or allow just ask me friend a friend to see what they'll think what the person is. Yeah, I think I learned how to talk more openly about this sort of thing because like before I did this I was just a bit like I don't want to talk about this stuff and all that so yeah and um, I got to understand like my friends and like what social media apps they use and how they stay safe so now I'm going to use quick add more like Adelina said and use other like different ways of staying safe like I will like learn that we don't like want to like be like confident and don't like want to like talk to people that we don't know and all that. Sharing is basically when parents will post pictures of their children and then not realise that other people can see it and other people can take that them pictures. So they need to be more careful about it and learn that they can like block people from their pages so they can't see the pictures of their children and they can put their accounts on private so like the only people they follow can see it. I feel like so say someone follows me that I don't know, I would ask like one of my friends if they know who they are. So then like if they one of my friends' friends then it sort of I sort of know who they are. So then I'll add them, but if none of my friends knew who they were, then I'll just delete them. I've learnt more about, like, I learnt about sharing, so about, like, your parents putting stuff on, like, their social medias, not knowing, like, the effects it'll have on us and stuff. Just check on your kids and check like ask them what social media they're on and ask them if like for example someone started talking to them and they don't know and just make sure you keep looking out for them. Tell your parents everything 
but like parents don't be so nosy don't always ask your kids everything because otherwise they're not gonna want to tell you everything because if if my mum dad kept on asking me I'd end up just not wanting to tell them um with parents I would say always ask your children what they're doing online but then also be aware about what they're doing online because they can be posting pictures of us in our uniforms and us with uh, like other people in our school and they like other people can see their pages because they don't know about um, putting your accounts on private so they need to be aware as well. I feel like with parents you need to ask for the children's permission first because parents usually just post the, about the children all the time and sometimes like say the say like your children are on holiday and like the school don't want to know or something like that and then they post it and stuff then they've like sort of like show like your friend and then the friend will tell the school so it sort of like like tells them you know, like talk to your kids and like ask if they want to know because if they have something up that you don't like and your friends see it then you might get like made fun of so yeah talk Wait. to your kids so there was an option to work behind the camera for you in that aspect, which you did that. So how did you feel about that experience? I feel like really more brave and all that. Like more like brave and confident being on camera. And, all that. and, and working the camera and the lighting and everything? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think so because it's good to get your thoughts and opinions out there as well as like learning. It like helps you be more confident and stuff around others who you might not have told this sort of stuff to before. Yeah, I would be more involved, but like, don't like want to like talk to them and all. I would recommend this program. Just talk about it. Just even if it's not with your parents, talk to your friends, they can always help you and don't feel like you're alone. Thank you very much for participating. Yeah. Let me hear those clap hands, clap hands.